All right, time to go on the beat. Gordon Whitmire was there in Cincinnati to see that game in person. But I mean, my goodness, the Cubs and White Sox both had quite the day yesterday. The Cubs lost 20 to five. Sox lost to the Red Sox 16 to seven. What has happened to our our Chicago baseball? At teams? least it was the Red Sox and not the freaking Reds. I mean, that's pretty pretty bad. That that's a terrible team in Cincinnati right now. And oh, God, what an ugly way to finish that series. Yeah. Uh, how many hits do they have? 20. The Reds had 20 hits, I believe. 20 runs. I don't know how many hits they I think, had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you had lost, 20 runs track. on 20 hits, and then you had Admiralton Simmons, uh, the position player. Yeah. Uh, those were what 40 mile an hour EFIS pitches. 41. Oh, 41. Sorry, 41, 41. miles per hour. I, I don't. He, he, ra he ranged from 41 to 45 on most of them. He got up into the 70s on on one. Yeah. So I'm watching the Cubs from the other side of town, and you know I I found this under. David Kaplan's <laughs> desk. Uh, where's the camera here so you can yeah, see it? Yeah, so um, the plan. Clearly there was a plan, and it led to a World Series title that you know will be talked about forever. What is the plan right now with the current Cubs regime? Well, I would love to see Dave take a crack at a sequel to this anytime soon because I'm not even sure they know enough of what's coming next in, say, the next six months to a year to give us a firm timeline for what their plan is. I think they generally know what they want to accomplish and the kind of team they want to put together, but I don't think they know anytime soon when it's coming. Look, you, you want to ask me about the Cubs, uh, you know, on, on this network, we're all about transparency. We're not going to, we're, we're not going to censor Sugar anything. Coke. We're going we're to tell, we're going to truth tell here. This club is in bad shape. Mm -hmm. They're going to sell. I mean, look, if they can't beat the Reds in a series and they get beat three out of four by the Diamondbacks and those were back-to-back -back series, you see the, what the schedule that's coming up? Uh, 11 games in nine days, I think. You've got the Sox, the, the Brewers, the Cardinals, and then they go on the road and the Yankees are on that trip. And then they come home and the Braves are here. So it's already ugly. Mm -hmm. It's a foregone conclusion. The guys in the clubhouse know it. I was on that trip talking to a bunch of they know what's coming. Um, Wilson Contreras is halfway out the door already. They're going to trade at least a pitcher or two. Wade Miley's a short timer. He's gone for sure. Don't be surprised if Stroman winds up in some trade rumors. And then you've got the relievers like David Robertson and some other bats, a, a bat like VR. I mean, he's not much of a glove, so you might want to stay away from him over on your side of town because you've got enough of that already. Yeah, but, we need some offense. But, but he's got a bat. Yeah, yeah. And, and so somebody's going to want that. And that's where this is headed. And... What we see in terms of Caleb Killians of the world, you know, a, a, a nice uh, pitcher in the system. Keegan Thompson has looked good. Keegan Thompson gets a start in the opener of the Sox yes. series. Um, is he long-term a starter for this club? We don't know right now. He's a pretty, pretty nice, I yes, mean, yes. exceptional, long reliever, piggyback type guy, swing man. Uh, so he's filling a role. He looks like a guy that could stick. Justin Steele looked like that, but then he looked terrible against the Reds. Against the Reds. So um, we'll see where he goes, but where Caleb Gillian goes, where these guys go, where a couple other relievers go. Uh, Christopher Morrell comes up, looks really good. We might see Brendan Davis by the end of the year. And then what happens in the lower minors? Do those guys get to double A? Any of them get to triple A? I don't know. But that's a couple years off from Bridget Right. Field. So what you. They can't know where they go next until they see what happens this year with some of these guys. And, and, and then there's these tweeners like Ian Happ. Mm -hmm. What do you do with Ian Happ? He looks really good this year. He's if, got, what, one more year left on his deal? He's got. After this year? He's got one more year of club control as yeah. an arbitration guy. So he's been amazingly streaky. Like when he's good, he's yeah. off the charts good. And then we saw last year how bad it can get at times when, when he hits those valleys. He started the season good. He started the season showing signs that there might be sustainability to this. And if there is, he, he might not only be an all-star for the first time, but now he's going to give them something to think about. And, if, and, and one of those things might be whether he's on the trade block. Well, this gives me something to think about because if, he's, if you think he is a part of your future, don't let him get to free agency. Lock him up right That's now. That's my point. That's my point. So you, you get past the all-star break into the, the bona fide trading season, and you, okay, now you, you decide, is he a trade chip or not a trade chip? And if he's not, let's, let's start talking to him. Does it matter that they're not calling this what it is? 
You I can think see, it does. Does it matter? Because you see what's going on. It's a rebuild. Look, we know what it is. You can't have it both ways. And I think they've tried to thread a needle. I mean, if you want to give Jed Hoyer the benefit of the doubt on, tr on some of this messaging, he was handed a bill of goods. Not a bill of goods, a pile of do. <laughs> um, uh, he, he, was, he had an ownership yeah. as he came in that wanted to cut and slash. Mm -hmm. And so there was no way. Be, before the pandemic, they were five days away from signing uh, Javi Baez. Now, whether you agree with that move or not, that would have been an indicator of wh how they plan to bridge a gap mm -hmm. toward their next competitive team. And it would have suggested maybe that this isn't going to be a full-blown rebuild. But once they decided to come in and cut costs, those talks went away. Any talks at all like that went away. And so did you, Darvish, and then so did Rizzo, and so did Bryant, and so did Baez at the trade deadline, along with six other guys at the trade deadline. And now it's a full-blown rebuild. There's no other way around that and so to come in and try to say, well, we want to compete while we're looking ahead, bull. If you're looking ahead, then the competing is eyewash. It's, 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 it's rolling the dice. Mm 